Hi everyone, my name is Marnie Sparrow. I'm one of the science coordinators here at Gisborne Secondary College and I share that role with Tracy Eagle, who some of you may already know. So what we're going to be doing in this virtual expo is I'm going to briefly be going through the main points of each of the science subjects we have on offer. At any point during the presentation, you can pause my audio and you can spend a little longer reading through the information on each slide. If at the end of the presentation you have any further questions, then you are welcome to contact myself or Tracy Eagle, or if you're currently undertaking a science subject, you can also talk to your science teacher for any further questions or if you want to know some more details about the subjects on offer. Thank you. So let's start with biology units one and two. So in unit one biology, we look at how organisms regulate their functions. We look at single celled organisms, multi-celled organisms, and we look at the challenges that organisms face in terms of survival. We look at specialization and renewal of cells, and we also explore how systems function through cell specialization and how homeostasis helps to keep organisms alive. At the end of unit one, you'll also undertake a student designed scientific investigation relating to what you've learned throughout that unit. Then in unit two, we examine how inheritance impacts on diversity. So this involves a bit of a study of genetics and how the environment um, impacts on the expression of our genes. We look at the different mechanisms for inheritance and we also look at ways to predict outcomes of genetic crosses. We also examine the advantages and disadvantages of asexual and sexual reproductive strategies. And then we look at the adaptations that organisms have evolved to enhance their chance of survival in the environment. We also cover a little bit of um, ecology and we look at the contributions of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander knowledge and perspectives in understanding the survival of organisms in Australian ecosystems. And at the end of Unit 2, there will be a student-designed research investigation into a contemporary ethical issue. If you are interested in biology units one and two, then please pause my audio and have a read through the assessments. On this slide here, we've got some photographs taken from the year 11 biology adaptations excursion to Werribee Zoo, where they get to learn about the sort of adaptations that organisms have that allow them to survive in their unique environments. So now let's look at biology units three and four. So in unit three biology, we look at how cells maintain life. So in this unit, we investigate the inner workings of the cell. We look at the structure and function of nucleic acids like DNA. And we also explore the structure and regulation of biochemical pathways with an emphasis on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Then in unit four, we explore how life changes and responds to challenges over time. So in this unit, we look at the human immune system, how that has evolved and how that gives us protection against specific pathogens. We also look at bioethical issues and challenges related to disease, which is very topical at the moment. And we consider how evolutionary biology is based on the accumulation of evidence over time. So this involves looking at the fossil record and evidence of evolution. And then at the end of Unit 4, we actually do a student-designed investigation where we draw on our knowledge from Units 3 and 4. If you are interested in the ways that you're assessed in Unit 3 and 4 Biology, then please pause and have a read through of this slide. This slide here, we've got some pictures of some Year 12 students undertaking some experiments at the Gene Technology Access Centre in Melbourne. So on this excursion they get to use some pretty high-tech equipment like PCR machines and gel electrophoresis tanks and they get to analyse the results of those that experimental work.
So let's look at chemistry units one and two. So in unit one chemistry, um, it's all about the different types of materials, metals, ionic and covalent compounds, and how we determine what they are and how they behave. We look at the periodic table and all the different things it tells us about the known elements. In unit two, we look at why water is such a unique chemical. It can behave as an acid or a base. It can dissolve all sorts of other chemicals and it gets bigger when it freezes. To help us with Unit 2's water analysis tasks, we go on a subsidised excursion to Ecolink and get to use their high-tech equipment to perform detailed analysis of water contaminants. In terms of assessment, if you'd like to pause my audio, you can read through that if you want to know some more details. In this slide here, we've got some pictures of students either undertaking experiments at school or experiments at Ecolink using the high-tech equipment there. Chemistry Units 3 and 4. Unit 3 chemistry looks at how we can manipulate chemical reactions to go the way we want them to. We can reverse reactions or have them make more of a particular product that we want. This is used in chemical production and industry. In Unit 4, we revisit organic compounds, which we would have studied in Year 11, and take it further, looking at the chemistry of food and digestion. To help us with the food chemical analysis, we go on a subsidised excursion again to Ecolink and get to use the high-tech equipment to perform detailed HPLC analysis of the compounds. Students design and perform their own investigation related to one of the topics studied and present it in an informative poster. And again, here are the assessments. You can pause and have a look at in more detail if you would like to. Here are some pictures of students undertaking some um, work at Ecolink. And then we've also got some examples here of some of the scientific posters that students have produced in Units 3, 4 Chemistry. So now let's look at environmental science units one and two. So in unit one environmental science, we look at how Earth is a dynamic system that's interconnected to support life. So we examine the processes and interactions that occur in the atmosphere, the biosphere, the hydrosphere and the lithosphere. We also focus on ecosystem function and the geological time scale and how we can use the past to help us predict changes in Earth's future. In Unit 2 Environmental Science, we look at what affects Earth's capacity to sustain life. So we explore how sustainable food and water systems can meet the demands of our growing populations. And we also learn about natural and human activities that can generate pollution and have adverse effects on the environment and on future generations. So here are the assessments. Please pause and have a read if you wish to. On this slide, we've got some photos from the class of 2021, and these are the year 11s that have been on all sorts of different excursions and had lots of learning opportunities, such as our camp where we snorkeled with the Australian fur seals, and we also went out to Mushroom Reef in Flinders to perform some transects on that camp. We've been spotlighting at Kyneton at Black Hill Nature Reserve, and we've also had a visit from Wild Action Zoo where we got to go get up close and personal with some of our native wildlife. So it is an incredibly hands-on science and it is one for people that are passionate about the environment. Environmental Science Units 3 and 4. 
In Unit 3, Environmental Science, we look at how biodiversity and development can be sustained. So we focus on environmental management through applying sustainability principles. We also explore the value of the biosphere to all living things and look at the important ecosystem services that are not only important for ecosystems, but also for human health and human well-being. We look at the threats to biodiversity and look at how biodiversity management can help to improve the outcomes for species. In Unit 4, we look at how climate change and the impacts of human energy can be managed. So we explore different factors that contribute to the um, variation of Earth's climate, um, but we also look at human impacts as well. We compare the sources and availability, reliability of different types of energy, such as renewable and non-renewable energy sources, and we analyse various factors that are involved in responsible environmental decision making and consider how science can be used to inform the management of climate change and the impacts of energy production and use. We also have a student designed investigation which draws on information that we've learnt from Units 3 and Units 4. So here are the assessments. Please pause and have a read if you wish to. So on this slide, we've just got some pictures that best represent Units 3 and 4 Environmental Science. This is the first time in 2022 that we're running this as a 3-4 subject. So we don't have any student pictures as yet, but we've got some nice pictures of some of the biodiversity um, and also some concerning climate change issues and some energy represented here. Now for physics, units one and two. So in unit one physics, we look at thermodynamics, in other words, heat, and we look at how heat transfers. We also study electricity, which involves building and testing circuits, as well as learning about how electricity is generated. Then we go on to cover radiation and explore how it can be used in society. In Unit 2, we learn about motion and the factors that can affect it. We also get to choose an area of physics to investigate in more detail, and you can have a look at the list. Um, there's 12 things to choose from there, and that's definitely a highlight for students undertaking Units 1 and 2 physics. In terms of assessments, please pause and have a read if you're interested. Here we've got some um, pictures, firstly, of the posters, scientific posters that students have created for their outcome three. And then we've got some other photos that kind of represent physics. So we've got some cables that obviously represent the electricity there. We've got a hang glider representing the motion. We've got some LED lights, an MRI machine, and then, of course, some, some solar panels there as well. Physics Units 3 and 4. In Unit 3, we look at the operation of motors and particle accelerators, as well as the orbits of satellites. We continue learning about electricity and motion. Then in Unit 4, we explore the properties of waves and with a particular emphasis on light. And that involves a lot of different experiments involving light, reflection and refraction, colour dispersion, and so on. If you're interested in looking at the assessments, you know by now that you should pause and have a read through if you're interested. In this slide, we have some pics that represent units three and four physics. So from Newton's laws of motion to the way waves behave. If you can figure out what some of these diagrams mean, then physics is probably the subject for you. So on to one of our most popular science subjects is psychology units one and two. So in unit one psychology, we explore the structure and function of the brain and the nervous system. We also investigate how the brain changes when we learn new information. 
And this can be really interesting when you're studying at the same time. In unit two, we look at external factors and how they influence behavior. Um, and this unit compares visual and taste perception and explores how perception can be distorted. So in this one, um, students get to do a range of different experiments where they themselves are the guinea pigs. We also um, look at how social interactions are affected by a range of factors, including attitudes and prejudice, um, status and social power, bullying and social media. If you want to know more about the assessments, we have those here for you to pause and read through. So some frequently asked questions for psychology units one and two. The first one is psychology a science? And the answer is yes, it is the science. It is a science and it does have the highest student numbers of any science in VCE. Question two, do I have to have completed year 10 psychology to choose VC psychology? The answer to that is no. So there are actually no prerequisites for VC psychology and you will not be disadvantaged if you haven't completed year 10. For question three, what resources do I need? You are required to purchase the textbook and student workbook. Both of these are essential tools in studies for psychology. So last but not least, we've got psychology units three and four. So in unit three psychology, we look at the structure and function of the nervous system and we look at the role of neurotransmitters and their impact on neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's. The biological and physiological models of stress are also investigated and we look at coping strategies for stress. The unit also investigates the theories of learning and the processes and levels of memory. And this can be really interesting when you're undertaking VCE because it gives you this added insight to how you learn. In unit four, we look at well-being and how it's maintained. So we explore the concepts of consciousness and we compare the effects of blood alcohol concentration to sleep deprivation. We also look at mental health with a focus on the biological and psychological, as well as social factors that contribute to and manage the mental disorder specific phobia. If you wanna know more about the assessments, please pause and have a read through. So why should you study units three, four psychology? Many of the concepts in three, four psychology directly relate to student lives, including stress and how to manage it, how to improve learning and memory, the importance of sleep and um, contributing and protective factors influencing mental health. Many university degrees have psychology units within the course and studying psychology in VC will also assist with these studies. That brings us to the end of our virtual subject expo for science. Thank you so much for joining us. If you do have any questions, then please contact either myself, Tracy Eagle, or your science teacher for more information. We hope to see you in a VCE science class very soon. Bye for now.